Hello, everybody, and welcome to Theology 101. Today, we will talk about patience. How many of you are carrying a backpack of burdens? Americans are one of the most stressed people who medicate, caffeinate, or numb their burdens with different substances. James wants to talk about how to carry around this backpack of burdens. Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. James says that we must be patient to carry the backpack of burdens in life. The word patient literally means macro suffering. So he is saying that we are to be patient or suffer through the seasons of life until Jesus returns as king. You see, James has seen a lot of injustices in his life. He has seen his older brother crucified even though he was God. James himself will eventually be thrown off a cliff by an angry mob. He will somehow survive the fall, but then the mob will come and then they beat him to death. So when James says to wait on Jesus, it is not some Christian cliche. This is the only way we can endure the difficult seasons of life. To illustrate the type of patience we need, James gives a picture of a farmer. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it, until it receives the early and the late rains. We understand the importance of seasons when we go to the market and certain fruits are in season. You can't get any fruit you want all year round. There is a season to everything. Farmers had to plant their seeds in hope of a future harvest that will feed his family. And until that harvest came, his family had to live on small rations or even go hungry for days. So the farmer had to be patient through the different seasons until it was time for the harvest season. So James says that we need to have a mindset of a farmer. Some seasons will be joyful, but some will be difficult. You might be thinking, how can I endure the difficult seasons of life? Look at what James adds. You also... Be patient, establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. The key to being patient is to establish your hearts. The word establish has the idea of resolve. Be confident in the future hope that will come when Jesus returns. In other words, look forward to the day when this horrible season will end and there will be no more suffering when Jesus returns as king. Patience also means to endure difficult people in life. Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. The word grumble has the idea of groaning or sighing. <sighs> Why are people so annoying? Now, have you noticed that we tend to grumble against those closest to us? Why do we do this? When we feel external burdens and pressure, we end up internally exploding and the shrapnel from that explosion hits those closest to us. A lot of times suffering people become selfish people because they need others to comfort them. However, when people fail to meet their needs, suffering people lash out. So you can understand how Christians who are suffering at the hands of rich landowners, persecution, and poverty will be frustrated with their situations and hurt people close to them. James says to not act as a judge because we don't have the right to do so. Instead, we need to know that Jesus, the judge, is nearby and he will come to judge that other person if necessary and to judge you if you treat them unfairly. James continues, As an example of suffering and patience, brothers, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. You might know of some Old Testament prophets as people we admire, but they were not popular and most of them were killed. Did the prophets have a legitimate right to grumble and complain? Yes! Yet because their hearts were established in God, they endured and remained patient. And when a person remains patient, there is a blessing that comes. Behold, we consider those blessed who remain steadfast. What is the blessing James is referring to? We need to look at the story of Job. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. Job was a righteous man who was very rich, with lots of cattle and kids. One day, Satan goes up to God and says, You know that Job only worships you because you bless him so much with material things. I bet that if he didn't have all these material blessings, that he would curse you. So God gives permission to Satan to take away everything from Job except his life. And in a matter of days, all of Job's children are dead. All his finances were wiped out. Later, Job is covered in boils to the point that he is scratching himself with shards of pottery. And the only thing that remained for Job was his wife and friends. And that wasn't a good thing. His wife's best advice to Job was for Job to curse God and die. Thanks for for the encouragement, honey. And his friends had a theology of karma where good things happen to good people and bad things happen to bad people. Well, Job understandably started to complain to God. He didn't understand why God would do this to him. But although Job struggled with God, he never denied God. Listen, Faith doesn't mean that you never struggle with God. Faith says that even when you suffer, you draw closer to God. So what was the blessing that Job received? Notice James does not highlight his material blessings, but this. 
how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. Job saw how compassionate and merciful God is through his suffering. It might sound contradictory, but the more you suffer, the more you appreciate God. And like Job, you will come out of your suffering more mature in your faith because you have seen that God does not owe you anything, and yet he is so compassionate and merciful that he gives you so much. Patience endures difficult seasons, people, and commitments in life. But above all, my brothers, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath, but let your yes be yes and your no be no, so that you may not fall under condemnation. Jewish people took oaths seriously, so a person would have make an oath he never intended on fulfilling. The problem with making an oath too frequently is that your word becomes cheap since a person only takes you seriously when you make an oath and doesn't when you don't. Instead, James says that you should follow through with your word all the time, that you will never need to make an oath. Now, what does your commitments have to do with patience? Because when we suffer, we feel like we have the right to no longer uphold our commitments. Even when your marriage is difficult, even when church becomes a burden, even when your friends hurt you, even when God feels distant, follow through on your commitments. This is what it means to let your yes be yes. And the only way you can be patient through the different seasons, people, and commitments of life is to have your eyes fixed on Jesus. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. When we run to Christ, he doesn't say, I don't understand why life is so hard for you. Instead, he can say, I know how difficult life is for you. I lived in your world. I know what it's like to be betrayed. I know what it's like to be poor. I know what it's like to feel the pressure of people's expectations. I know what it's like to face death. I know what it's like to follow through with my commitments, even when it hurts. I went to the cross, even when I didn't want to. I know what you are going through. I suffer so that I can stand next to you when you suffer. I was there for you, and I will be there with you. So how heavy is your backpack of burdens this morning? Place your backpack of burdens on Jesus, because he is willing and able to carry the burdens for you and to walk through this valley with you. Thank you to today's sponsor on Reverence. They offer free digital worship music app called Maskill. If you want to find out more, I'll leave some links below in the description box. If you missed the last video about money, I'll leave a link here for you to watch. And until next time, see you.